This video is picking up right where the previous video left off. We're still working in part 060, logic and control, and we're down onto the section labeled logical operators. So in this video, I want to talk about and and or. And I say this to my students and I recommend this to you as well. I recommend using the single ampersand for and and the single vertical bar or pipe symbol for or. I'll say a little bit about what your alternatives are later on and why you might choose to use them, but these just work. They work in all the situations that you might want to use them in, and so that's what I recommend using. All right, let me run this section, control enter. Let me resize my window and try that again. All right, so here are my results. One represents true, zero represents false, and I have three different vectors of true and false values. My first vector resulted from this expression right here, where I'm going to check is z greater than x and is z greater than y for each of the pairs of values between my z vector and my x vector, or my z vector and my y vector. And since both of those are true in 100% of situations, the and, when I say is this true and also this true to get a resulting true, I end up with all trues. Now on this next line, I didn't use any parentheses the way I did in the previous line. That's just to emphasize that like you can use the parentheses. This is the order in which things will execute. First, the left side, then the right side, and then all of it together. But you don't have to. I kind of recommend using a limited number of parentheses for organization. My personal preference would probably be something like that, but you can organize it however you like. Now the second result here uses or for the pipe symbol. So x greater than y or x greater than z. x greater than z is false, completely false, 100% of the time, five out of five. But we still get three true results here and two false because it's an or. We only need one side or the other to be true and x greater than y is true for the first three values of x and y. Now below that I have an xor here XOR is a function, so it's built a little bit differently than the ampersand or the single pipe. We use the word XOR, or the abbreviation XOR. It's an abbreviation of exclusive OR. And then in parentheses, we have the two things that we want to compare. And in this case, I put in two vectors. I use the ellipses, or dot, 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 to wrap this down onto the next line, which is a perfectly fine thing to do. And I basically said, okay, this or this, but exclusively, so not both. So since it is both, that's false. And when I XOR again, true and true, well, I get false. But when I XOR true and false, I get true. The exclusive OR wants exactly one of the two options to be true in order to produce a true. And that's what we see here. Continuing on down, using those same vectors, I'm gonna put a tilde or not in front of first result to negate all of these trues. And what I'm going to end up with is a bunch of falses, because if you put a not in front of true, you get false. If you put a not in front of false, you get true. And then I XORed again my new first result with my original previous second result, and I get the opposite of what I had on the XOR the first time, right? So false or true results in true, but false or false still results in false, because the XOR needs exactly one of its two inputs to be true. Continuing on down. For this class, or I suppose for YouTube, I want you to use the single ampersand for and and the single vertical bar for or. I'm gonna compare this example right here to the one right after it where I use the double ampersand and the du double vertical bar, but those behave slightly differently. These are sort of more flexible. They work in every situation. By the way, all this code, unless I say otherwise, works perfectly in octave as well. All right, so let's resize our window here, run this. Enter a number. I'm going to enter the number eight. All right, now I got a false and a true. False because is x outside of the range seven through 12? No, it's not, so that's false. Is x between one and 10? That's true. All right, let's try it again. Uh, negative three this time. Is x outside the range seven through 12? Yes, that's true. But is it between one and 10? Nope, that's false. All right, so it looks like this is working out. I use the input function to grab a number from the input from the user. How can I check if a number is outside of an interval? Or since I've been using the word interval to refer to you know, MATLAB intervals, like zero through four, there we go. Let's say uh, outside of a range. So I can tell if a number is outside of a range by saying is that number less than the bottom of the range or is that number greater than the top of the range? Or is the top of the range less than the number? 
I actually recommend never using greater than signs. Now you'll see me uh, be a hypocrite later on and use greater than signs, but let me explain, because that sounds a little bit extreme. Why might it be nice to never use a greater than sign? Because we learn the number line reading left to right, right? So here's your typical number line. It goes from low or negative values to higher positive values as you go from left to right. If we only use less thans, then the order of our numbers is going to be the same. Is x to the left of 7 on the number line, or is 12 to the left of x on the number line? If you use a greater than, it messes it all up. And you never need to use a greater than, or a less than, I guess if you prefer. You could say, instead of x less than 7, 7 greater than x. But again, I don't really recommend that. All right. How can we check if a number is between two other numbers? Well, we could say, if we want to know if x is between 1 and 10, including the 10 and the 1, if 0 is less than x and x is less than or equal to 10. Or we could have done 1 less than or equal to x, just like that. That would also work fine. The spacing here is uh, quite optional. We could get rid of, I would recommend getting rid of those spaces so that this on the right is grouped and this on the left is grouped and the and is in between, but it's personal preference. All right, continuing on down. Technically, single ampersand and single pipe should be used for vectors or matrices and double ampersand and double vertical bar should be used for scalars, single individual numeric values. So here I have the exact same code as before, other than Instead of a single vertical bar, I have two. Other than a single ampersand, I have two. And it works the exact same as before. In fact, I'm not even going to bother running it. You can test it out yourself. Link to all these files that I cover in all these videos is always provided in the video description. But it does the same thing, just trust me. But why even provide the option to have a double ampersand or a double, double vertical bar? Why not just have one symbol that works for vectors and for scalars, like most of our other operations? Well, the reason is short-circuiting. Continuing on down, I'll explain what short-circuiting is all about. But first, I want to show that the single ampersand works with uh, vectors or with scalars, and the double ampersand does not. All right, so I got this error on purpose here. But first, I got something that worked. So I have two vectors, v and t, and they both have ones and zeros, which can be thought of as trues and falses. And then I say v and t with a single ampersand. And that works. It just does an and between the sets of values here. So 1 and 0, that's 0. 0 and 0, that's 0. 1 and 1, that's 1, or true. But then if I try and do the exact same thing with double ampersand, it gives an error, because that just doesn't work. Notably, one very small difference with octave is that this actually does work. I believe, though, what it's doing is effectively this and then all right there. Are they all true? Uh, I believe that's what the octave version is doing. I haven't experimented uh, too much to verify for sure that's what's happening, but I'm pretty sure that's what's happening. And in any case, all this code otherwise works as well in octave as in MATLAB, if not better. Like, the octave actually does not give an error. It gives zero as a result, a single zero for this line of code. So that's a little bit interesting. Continuing on down. Now, the double ampersand and the single ampersand both work if we're doing a scalar comparison of true and false, just single true and false values, right? So true and false is false, whether you use double ampersand or single ampersand. So long story short, the reason I recommend everybody just use the single ampersand, the single vertical bar for or, is because they always work. But let's finally talk about short circuiting. Now, I originally Googled this and I found this Stack Overflow page, which you can check out if you, you know, download this document. And people are somewhat arguing on there. I know, believe it or not, people are arguing on Stack Overflow. People are arguing about whether or not the short circuiting actually occurs. So I really wanted to test this for myself. So I set up a little experiment. I have a true or false statement on the left of an AND, and it's the same true or false statement whether it's the double ampersand or the single ampersand. And then on the right side, I have a bit of an illegal operation. I'm doing a double OR, on two vectors, which is not allowed and will cause an error. And I'm doing that in both places. Now, what short circuiting is, finally, to answer that question, is basically if you're starting with and, and you have a false value, then you don't need to check what's on the right side. You have false and something else, 
but there's no way you can have false and anything that will overall result in true. You can't have it. It's going to be false. And the opposite is true with or. If we have something that's true or something else, well, it doesn't matter what that something else is. There's no possible way to end up with a false value if you've already started with a true one on the left side of your or. So the short circuiting is just this tiny little efficiency gain of saying, okay, well, don't even try the right side. If we saw false and then we see an and, don't worry about anything else because you can't possibly get anything other than false. If you see true and then you see an or, well, don't even worry about calculating anything else because you can't possibly get anything other than true. Double ampersand short circuits. It does stop the calculation if it knows what the result is already and it doesn't calculate the right side. Single ampersand, as well as single vertical bar, does not short circuit. No matter what's on the left side, it's still going to run the calculation on the right side. And so what happens when I run this section is it works with the double ampersand and it does not work with the single ampersand. It gives this error here. Now I would still argue that single ampersand is just generally better because there's definitely some programmer error here. There's definitely some confusion about what the programmer is trying to do. I did it on purpose to generate the error, right? So that was success for me because I was just trying to determine through experimentation if there was actually short circuiting. And there is. I can't imagine what sort of MATLAB program you're writing that that sort of efficiency gain is vital to you. But, you know, maybe you're doing a ton of different logical operators and that's really important to you. If you're operating on scalars, then by all means, use the double ampersand, use the double vertical bar. But if you're operating on vectors, you got to use single ampersand, single vertical bar. And there's a similar difference with the uh, or versus the double pipe or. So when I run these, the first one works because you're allowed to compare vectors with a single, but you're not allowed to compare them with a double. And like I said, all this code works in octave as well, so no need to show that. Um, but the octave actually does not show an error for this. Again, I think what's happening is that it's doing an or, but basically doing an all. Uh, are all the results true? I think that's what Octave is effectively doing when you use the double vertical bar on a vector. But don't quote me on that. Maybe investigate that for yourself. All right, and that's all for this video. We will continue the next one right where this one leaves off.